Hey everybody, and welcome to a royal wild ride with Steve-O. It doesn't get more Hollywood royalty than William Shatner. Are you kidding me? He's been in the entertainment business for 80 years. He's 92 years old. Are you kidding me? Oh my God. And if you think that this tour bus that I'm traveling around the UK on right now is futuristic, <laughs> wait till you get a load of William Shatner's burial plans for himself. Yeah, dude. Very forward thinking, very candid. And man, I, I just wasn't prepared for how emotional I was going to get thinking about my own dad being as old as he is, talking to William Shatner and just... It's epic. And this guy is fascinated with my career. William Shatner's take on Jackass is absolutely hysterical. You guys are going to love this one because I loved it way more than I ever thought I could. So let's get into it. Just watch yeah, your head right here. Yeah, be hey. careful. Hey. Hey. Watch your head. Watch my head. Yeah. Okay, I've got, I wash my head. Where am I sitting? You're going to sit right Hello, here. Hello, sweetheart. Hello. It's windy. Hello, Do you have Wendy. a color preference to set the light to? How are you, man? I'm doing great, it's man. Great to see, to see you. you, man. Likewise. Thank you. Man, what a what an honor. What a car. Yeah, huh? Okay, so on? twist this to me. Yeah, Where, and that's your camera there? Yeah, do you have a, a color right? Uh, a color uh, preference? Yeah. Uh, blood. Blood? Ooh. Yeah. Right here. You know, you know the color of blood? <laughs> yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we shouldn't get hot because we've got this fancy new air conditioner. Oh, fantastic. A whole tube, a whole yeah. thing. Um, all right, so let's not waste anybody's time. Uh, apologies for being a little late. Um, Would you like we'll, a water? No, I'm good. We'll dive right in. Yeah. Okay. Got, that, got nice feet. <laughs> well, thank you. No, you do. <laughs> You're not, you don't have water. Swelling. Yeah, that's, uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, okay. Do you have swelling? Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, William Shatner. Yeah, it's me, right here in a truck. But you can call him Bill. That's the title <laughs> <laughs> of the documentary that we are, uh, we had a great success with at, uh, a big film festival called South by Southwest, and it's a lovely film, and it's called... Uh, you can call me Bill. And the, the, the problem, which I know you will face from time to time, is a documentary is made about you. It's like a, a biographical film. Now you got to go out and sell it. Like, you know, so let me talk to you about me. Yeah. <laughs> and it's uh, an anathema to me. I, I can't stand it, but uh, I have to. So, yes, uh, You Can Call Me Bill is a wonderful film. Yeah, and, and where can people find it? Uh, there's a rock <laughs> <laughs> under. Um, it's in the process of being uh, put into other festivals. Okay, good. Uh, and uh, people are bidding on buying it. Okay, so good. Where it is and how to see it, I don't know exactly yet. So where? But keep that in mind. Uh, uh, in addition to that, uh, there's a documentary of a performance I gave at Kennedy Center. That's be coming a documentary about it, the performance and the, the performance itself and things that led up to the performance and an album based on the same performance probably called something like um, uh, Live at Kennedy Center. You know, okay. So, yeah. And is that the album which will feature the track I Want to Be a Tree? That's correct. <laughs> that, that This is the most fascinating thing. We, we, we are brethren. Okay. You and I. Yeah, and, I, and I'll tell you. I think for what, 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 where, what is our relationship? Okay, I think we've got many things in common, which make us very, very entangled, and one <laughs> See, of them. That, that's that word entangled is a very. Oh yeah, yeah. Precise. Maybe the, no, no, it's a good word. Oh, is it okay? Good. Yeah, no, no, that's a word that nature, all of us are in, entangled. Interwoven. In, interwoven. Yes. Right. Um, okay, I feel so strongly. And I've made this public, I've posted videos about it, that cemeteries drive me absolutely insane because it's, it's a cycle of life. 
So we're, we're only temporarily borrowing this physical matter, this, this condensed energy, for, for a very brief period of time. And at the end of this physical body, for us to be so just, vain. Uh, uh, is it audacious, vain, just ob the hubris. obnoxious to take a <laughs> plot of land to permanently and, occupy. And, and well, usually the most valuable land because you got to dig deep. So you're getting through soft, porous earth, yeah, that's fertile, fertile, soil. fertile soil and occupying. It. And it's diminishing uh, because people are dying. People don't stop dying. Right, right. You know the saying, um, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. <laughs> well, I submit that, that cemeteries Make the whole world a cemetery. <laughs> I was listening to a guy. That's right. Uh, uh, you you cease to exist. I was listening to a guy last night being funny about somebody who committed suicide, and he used the phrase they he, they chose to take their own life. And I thought, yeah, you could choose. That's your life. Yeah. You could choose where you want to go and do and be. You choose. Uh, usually, somebody chooses your education for you, but 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 you ch you choose to do what you want in life, what you can and do. And I mean, your life is your own; it's your own property. Right. So you can choose uh, <coughs> how you wish to end your life, uh, how you want to go out, uh, with pain and and remorse uh, in a bed, or violently, or uh, giving your life to a cause. It's yours to choose, isn't it? Steve and I had a conversation that we're both going to commit suicide by dying of old age. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and, oh. and I'm in the throes. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm working on being better with my conversational etiquette, but I have to interject here because I rudely forgot to introduce my co-host. I'm Scott, by the way. Scott Randolph and Skinny Vinny up in the front. That's great. Are you all on camera? We are. Yeah, yeah. Every, oh, everybody's great. got camera. Wonderful. Then, uh, yeah. It's all inclusive. I get carried away. I get so excited that I forget to introduce Well, that's, my... that's good. And you, and, you, and you follow through and you've introduced everybody. Just, so it was like a, like an orchestra, uh, yeah. the, the uh, beginning of a musical. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so just quickly back to the burials. Yeah. The idea that you are taking a plot of land selfishly permanently forever rendering it useless for feeding people, for housing people, for any kind of helpful, productive thing. And on top of that, once you have your body buried there, you've now made it creepy. No, yeah, so, <laughs> so if you believe in a soul and life after death, doesn't interfere with that belief. Correct. You are, you, your body, like every other body that dies, is taken over by fungi and yeah. you, you know the nature reclaims you no matter what you do so why not reclaim a, a, make that have a, a voice in your reclamation and i chose a, a tree and uh, and i wanted a sequoia yeah oh you could choose the tree well uh, well you you could specify hey of course you know uh, put a a potted palm on my on my burial site or a sequoia, but uh, you need a certain al altitude. You got to yeah. be at yeah, a certain the General uh, Sherman up uh, Yosemite. Yeah, exactly. You got to be like four thousand, five thousand mm -hmm. feet. Uh, so a uh, redwood. Okay. California red. Now, how do you go about doing this? Are there specific companies? I'm glad that, you asked well, that. Well, you you would. Uh, yes, there are specific companies, and I haven't. Uh, I'm leaving it to the people who will see me go. Mm -hmm to follow through since they read your will yeah and they and they got to buy a tombstone and find a plot of land and get somebody <laughs> to speak it all you don't have to do any of that just tell your loved ones cremate me because i you have to i'm not put sure the, that you do put the could the, put the goodness in place where the tree is going to grow and plant a tree there's no law saying you have to have a tombstone do you I, have to buy that piece of property where the tree is yeah, going to be planted? Yeah, well, I, I would think. Yeah. Although there are uh, organizations that have uh, forests, uh, so you plant a tree in a forest. Yeah. Uh, I 
I have, I'm a member, I've become uh, part of a company that is called Storyfile. And Storyfile records you with 18 cameras and, and, uh, and uh, 3D. A computer records your voice. And the technology is that you can play this tape of you by pressing a button and, and anybody can ask the image of you a question and the technology, if you've been interviewed long enough, will answer the question. So imagine wow. some grandchild or some great, great, so what the? William Chat Randy? GPT. Yeah, what? <laughs> you ever heard of Chat GPT? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. William Shat GPT. Well, that's funny. Uh, <laughs> but it would be along those lines. Yeah. But the technology allows you to ask the image a question. Hmm. So they foresee that being in a booth. Uh, imagine if some of the greats, uh, like Beethoven and Einstein, and you were able to say, oh, just uh, What's the Mr. Secret Einstein, life? what were you thinking when you did X, Y, and Z? And he says, well, I, I did that too. I would fear that... For example, uh, Bob Marley, the le yes. legend of music. Yes. Now that's a strange name to pick for the well, example you're going to. Well, th because Bob Marley's music has gone on after he's passed to be sampled and and made into all of this aggressive techno electronic oh. bomb 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 music. Oh, I see what you and, mean. And and I just I, my my gut tells me that if Bob Marley were to be made aware of the ways in which his music has been sampled and repurposed, that he would be deeply offended. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, but he, he smoked a lot of dope, right? <laughs> he did. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so, so you know, hey, Bob, you know, they're going bang, bang, bang on your music. It goes ordinary, zoom, zoom, zoom. Well, yeah, man. Bam, bam, bam is not good. <laughs> uh, zoom, zoom, zoom is better. I mean, I, I, I'm just saying, may, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he wouldn't be offended at all. And maybe it's perfectly fine because it's his estate which licenses the music, so it's all in, in order. But I make that example because I wonder if, if, if this, it sounds like artificial intelligence that you're describing to answer the questions, is going to end up putting words into your mouth. Well, which, yeah, hang on. The, you, that's too... Uh, pieces of technology that are separating. One is, I spent five days in front of a camera. Okay. Okay. Uh, and the technology is such that you pay for the length of time you wish to be interviewed. You could spend the morning at an X number of dollars, or spend, you've got a lot of money, you spend five days in front of a camera and reveal your whole life for your, for your, uh, the people that come after you. Okay. Uh, so it can only take from that library. You know, take from that library, okay. whereas the uh, so, whereas the artificial right. intelligence mm -hmm. making things up is right. not what you said. Right. Okay. Good. Uh, okay. So that, there's a difference there, and a very serious uh, difference because, as we all know, there are machines that can make you sound like somebody else, mm -hmm. right. or have you sound like yourself saying things you never said. Right. And now we're almost at the point uh, where your image is. Uh, you, you can't tell the difference between mm -hmm. what is n not you and you. And so, as we all know, the potential of an image of somebody important saying something right. of importance that that person never said or did or uh, we're at war, you know, the terrible things are happening. So that's something that we all need to deal with. Right. This other thing is you uh, leaving a testimonial. Right, okay. uh, not unlike a lot of um, a lot of people leave a picture on the tombstone of them set, uh, right. of the dead person. Right. Well, this is like leaving a moving picture okay. because what, wouldn't it be wonderful to go to where your tree is, or if you're mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you're traditional Give words of wisdom. Uh, well, whatever words of. Uh, it wasn't he stupid? He was such a. I knew he was stupid. Look at what he said there. You know, so uh, the, the truth would, would reveal itself. The truth will reveal itself, and even if I don't like the truth, I want to know it. And that is why I wear a whoop band. Now, according to my whoop band, 
I did not sleep very well last night. I'm working on 11% recovery. And that's just a bummer, but it makes sense because it was my first night on a new tour bus here in the UK. But you know what? It tells me what to do about that. It says that I'm overreaching today because, uh, you know, I'm not recovered to perform tomorrow. I got to get to bed earlier. I need more sleep than usual because of my higher sleep debt and strain. See, that's important stuff to know. That's the truth about what I need to be doing. And my health monitor, man, heart rate variability is low. I never get that. And I know because I've got multiple whoop groups of my buddies, I've always got the highest HRV in the group. But sadly, not today. At least I know that, though. And you can know all kinds of stuff about what's going on with you if you get a whoop band, too. Plus, if you go to whoop.com, that's W-H-O-O-P.com, and use the promo code Stevo, you're going to get 10% off at checkout. And a whoop membership is just crucial, man. It's the most sophisticated sophisticated fitness tracking device known to man. You're going to know about how many calories you're burning, keeping track of all your activities, how oxygenated your blood is. It goes on and on and on and on, and you go to whoop.com to get it with the promo code Stevo. Now let's get back to it. But it's, it's like allowing yourself to live a little bit longer. Right. That was my whole obsession with the video camera was that it, that the videos of me would outlive me. Well, what, what, what was wrong with that? Nothing was wrong with that. I love it. But you, uh, a certain number of your films will live long after you. Yeah. Are, are you happy with that? Do you, do you want the, your films? Because you, you, you made films of a particular style. Yeah. Do you want them to, well said. <laughs> to, to live long after you? Yes. Here's, here's what my father did. Yes. Um, the uh, I actually had somebody ask me a question last night. I think they were, it was an interviewer. I think they were kind of trying to get me, you know, to, to, little, to rib me a little bit. They said, is stapling your ball sack to your leg something that you consider wholesome? Did you do that? Uh, yeah, I did. Oh, my God. With a, with a, More than a, once. a staple gun. Are you serious? Nightly. Did that? Did that? <laughs> Did that lengthen? <laughs> Did that pull on the muscles? I don't think it lengthened it. And, and the context. Did it tighten it? <laughs> the context so in which. You gotta staple that again. Oh my god! I had just been saying that I feel our jackass movies have a wholesome quality because the spirit of it is positive and designed to. Wait a minute. <laughs> The, the Jackass movies were positive, yeah, and 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 memorable. But they were, they were, incredible testimonials to what the human body can stand and what the mind w can do to overrule the natural inclination for self-preservation. Right, that's true, <clears throat> and <clears throat> that to the extent that what we did is. Uh, self-destructive, reckless, yeah. dangerous. Yeah, yeah, I would use all those words. Yeah, we are all uh, attention whores and very uh, eager for the attention and yeah. and, and uh, very, very uh, willing participants okay. in what's going on, which makes it permissible to enjoy watching it because we want all of this stuff to be happening No, no, that's so permissible much. from your point of view. From the observer's point of view, they're going, oh, can you say shit on this? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Holy shit! <laughs> he stapled his balls to his leg. <laughs> yeah. What's he? How's he gonna run? Oh my God, he's running. <laughs> you know? <laughs> how's he gonna? How's he gonna fuck? Oh my God, he's fucking. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I, my answer to this guy, I said, well, um, the human experience is uh, is is really a a catch-22 situation we have one instinct which is to survive yes and one guarantee which is we won't survive so we're starting out in a jam and as we barrel towards this inevitable Collision. imminent demise yeah. <clears throat> our bodies wilt and <laughs> deteriorate so it, even if you have a great life 
it's gonna suck at some point. Luckily for you, Bill, you've made it 92 years and you're still doing great, which is unbelievable. I have stapled my balls to my life. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. the secret to a long but life. I said, that's if you have a great life. But a lot of people... Yeah, but you know, you know, those are relative terms. What's a great life? I mean, look, I love dogs. I have two... I've had dogs all my life. Usually two to keep one, one to keep the other company, and they're with me. Like, look at this guy's <laughs> hind end is drooped over, but he's so ecstatic. I love that. This is a girl, the, Wendy. So Wendy is so ecstatic to be by your side. She's got yeah. a hip rotation there. That's got to be, you know, that yeah. muscle's got to be sore. She's like, no, I'm not going to move because if I move, uh, he'll move his arm around. It, I, 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 I love. What? Where am I going with that? With animals. Uh, so what's a great life? Right. Is a great life like God? I had, I had this great dog. I suffered through her death because they, right. they're 10, 10, 12 right. years. She's I gonna, know. you know, she's older now. She got four, four or five more years. Oh. Really, that's why you get a tortoise. They last a hundred. They last years. hundred years. <laughs> I, I'm with you. So, the, so now, I've had. A dec decades of dogs' lives. I have lives that I cherish. That's a great life. My part of my life has been with my animals. Sure, that's a great life. Right. It could have been under a tree in in total poverty. Guy living in a under the a drawbridge uh, with a plastic tent has his love, whether yeah. it's his lady or his guy or. Or his dog. For sure. Isn't that a great life? For sure. So what's a great life? It mm -hmm. is a subjective question. I agree. Peace of mind. But what, oh. I, what I told this interviewer last night was that a lot of people don't like their job. They might have health problems that are giving them considerable stress. They're maybe not happy in their marriage. And any of those people with any of those problems... I submit to you that when they're confronted with video footage of me stapling my balls to my leg, they are not thinking about their problems, and as such, I have made their problems go away, albeit temporarily. I agree with all of that. And for that, I consider stapling my balls to be noble, and I have dubbed myself I've a, coined, nobleman. a nobleman. A nobleman. <laughs> Scholar. And, and, and the, 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 the profession <laughs> of right. coined. So I had one experience <laughs> with... Uh, Johnny uh, Knoxville. Knoxville. Okay. <laughs> so I'm sitting on a dais with uh, um, uh, uh, Mike. Uh, oh, that it wasn't Knoxville. It was me when I ran into Mike Tyson's it wasn't fist. It was you. It was you. I broke my nose on <laughs> okay. Mike Tyson's okay. fist right I'm in front of you. I'm going to describe to you something <laughs> that that uh, Mike uh, Tyson and I looked at each other like I can't believe. So you're sitting on one side of Mike. I'm sitting the other side of Mike, and we're, it was a, a, a roast of some kind. And, and I, I believe you were in on the conversation. We're talking about all kinds of the religion and what he's doing and, and the boxing. And, and <coughs> it was great. I had a great time on the dais with him talking. Now it's over. Ah, thank you very much. Johnny says to... Uh, I said to, to, to Mike. To Mike, hold your I, fist out. Yeah. Mike says, what? Um, hold your fist out. You mean like this? And he puts his fist out. And he goes across the stage and runs <laughs> into his fist. Yeah. So we both look at each other. What is going on? And he says, oh, it didn't work. Let's do it again. And Mike says, What? <laughs> Run into your fist again. Yeah, I dove you did it across. Twice? I, I, oh, I did it many times. And I, and I, <laughs> I dove. You, I and dove into it. When it was bleeding, he said, ah, okay, ah, got it. Ah, yeah, ah, oh, ah. my nose was like, the break. my nose was all the way over here. It was so badly broken. And you're on Why camera. Why did you do that? <laughs> yeah, do you remember what you said afterwards? You're on camera. It's so funny. Uh, like, no, what did I you, say? You, you look and you go, Steve-O, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. steve what the fuck? <laughs> but Steve, what the fuck is what everybody says? Steve is a normal response to that. Yeah. What the fuck? Right. Because you, there, there, there's a, a chip missing, <laughs> or more kindly, you've got an additional chip. Okay? okay, you and your crew. But some of the crew have only half that chip. 
because they go, oh, geez, you mean I get, you want me to throw myself on the cactus? Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, like I'm going to be reluctant to do this. Steve does it three or four times. Right. He does it three or four times. Enough. The other guy, the other guys, there's more than one that go, oh, God, it's going to hurt like hell. And then you got to take tweezers and pluck all the mm -hmm. things. Out. That's crazy, man. It, it, it is. And once again, when people. What is it? Tell me what that is. I, that is um, the highest level of attention seeking. And, and it's not that I wow, have. Wow, you said that more than once. You really mean it. Yeah. But you're so bright. And, <laughs> you know, you're good looking. You've got great feet. <laughs> <laughs> no you could swelling. Do, you, could be, you could be foot commercials. I don't know about that. I'm, I. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, I uh, you know, I, my, my, my desire for attention outweighs wow. my need for comfort. Wow. And, um, and, and again, I... I uh, Quickly, I, where does that come from? Uh, well, you don't have to be Sigmund Freud to imagine <laughs> that a lack of uh, attention and supervision from my parents, uh. plus growing up in five different countries where I was always the new kid in school. And always looking for attention. Yeah. And you got attention by saying, hit me. Not hit me. Like, uh, at one point, I unscrewed a salt shaker and consumed all the salt in it to try to impress uh, my classmates. Nobody did, you was blow, a did you blow up the next day? <laughs> was the water retention? <laughs> I, I, I've, went, I've learned since then that yeah. that was a particularly bad idea. You know, the next day. Well, a lot of those ideas are not particularly good for right. your longevity. Right. The fact that we, you and I are sitting here now is like, uh, it's you know, I was looking forward to it, to, uh, talk to, to talk to you about it because it's so unusual. It's, you know, it probably could be likened to the tradition of monks piercing their sure. nose and their ears and, and uh, putting uh, uh, needles through them. And, and uh, I think what they were after was their ability to control their mind so that the pain wasn't overwhelming. Do, do, is that what you're doing at Wait, some point? You had the guy come over your house one day and stick the needle through your hand, right? Didn't you? Right. Did you actually stick that through your hand? Yeah, that was. What's the secret Or was it that? There, there's, there's no, was it a special effects? That, that one, you just actually put a needle through your hand. And, and did it hurt? <laughs> and then you call it magic. <laughs> <laughs> but then, did it hurt? It hurt a little bit, yeah. But it, it hurt was... a little bit. <laughs> so wait a minute. Does pain tolerance come into this? Again, it's uh, I, like... If I had uh, an extraordinary tolerance for pain, um, then there would be no reaction to to uh, the the experience of the pain. And what makes the the jackass movies and a lot of the things that I do is the reaction. So so feeling the pain is really uh, integral to the art. And but the expression of the feeling of the pain is also there, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you could scream and faint. That wouldn't be as theatrical as saying, oh my God, this hurts, I can't tell you. I'm going to tell you how much it hurts. There's a fire I, burning into my head. I, I, I can't move my fingers. <laughs> Screaming and fainting is also high, highly entertaining, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but it's momentary. The moment of faint, he's right. dead. You know, he ceases to, to entertain you. Right. So you got to stay, yeah. stay conscious to be really entertaining. Yeah, he expressed himself pretty well when he had the beehive on his dick. <laughs> He did he? Yes, yeah. so they, they, they actually strapped the queen bee to my wiener. <laughs> so the, whole, the whole colony just got on my no, wiener. No, come on, yeah. I missed that one. Yeah, that was What happened? Uh, I, I got stung about 12 times. And did it I make did. your wiener bigger? Uh, it didn't. Um, I mean, actually, my, wiener, a... my wiener got away with it. it I, I took one on the balls. 12 times? Yeah, I got it just all over my so body. So would you swell up? No, nah, I, I, I appear to be not allergic to bees. <laughs> well, I was going to say, if nothing happened, then it was like a sweet reminiscence. It, it was, it was, it was, uh, pricks. it was what we call a trailer moment. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Right. But, but did they fuzz over your wiener? So, so uh, no, for, because it was an R rated movie. Oh, no, so, I see. That we're so right. we were able but to if show. it were shown on television, which they are, yeah. they'd have to fuzz out they will, the yeah. very. Excitement, I mean, that's the excitement. Did you get an erection? Believe it or not, having thousands of bees on my wiener did not arouse me. But my lady does arouse me, 
And when I take a Bluetooth tablet, man, my lady extra arouses me. Why? Because Bluetooth tablets have the same active ingredient as both Viagra and Cialis, except they only cost a fraction of the price. And I can assure you, they are a very good time. If you've ever been thinking about trying a Bluetooth tablet to learn for yourself that it's a very good time, then man, are you in luck because the listeners of the Wild Ride Podcasts can get an entire month's supply of Bluetooth tablets absolutely for free. You only pay five bucks for shipping. That is if you go to bluechew.com, use the promo code Stevo, quickly consult with the medical provider online, I mean a couple minutes, and these Bluetooth tablets are on their way to you, an entire month's supply for free. All you pay is five bucks for shipping. And again, that is if you go to bluechew.com and use the promo code Stevo. Now let's get back to it. I did not. I did not get an erection. Did it shrink? But I, I looked pretty good at the moment, you know. For you know, like, did you, how, did you try and get it up? I didn't try to get it up, but uh, I, I was pretty happy with where I was in my flaccid state, as far as not being too contracted. Yeah, you think with like the blood flow going there, you'd get an erection. Well, you must have had a good lawyer to have a, 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 a good, a good non-contract. I do not disclose. <laughs> right. it, it was a, it was an, it was a, a nice warm day. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, one more question, or sure. another question. Do you anticipate it? Do you like, oh, there's going to be a bee on my wiener. That's going to be, well, there were that's exciting. Closer I to thousands. That. <laughs> I got to give the person who thought of that a bonus. Yeah, Clo- closer to thousands of bees. I found out that it was happening after I arrived on the set that day. The actual bit had not yet been assigned to anybody and when i heard about it i said oh that's all me let me get that one did anybody fight you on it nobody fought me on it (laughs) everybody uh everybody's let me have it so so that's a really interesting motivation dynamic of attention people talked about that for months yeah that one is uh um, I mean, you know, we're both authors. I wrote a book about this. Uh, well, I wrote a book in which I discussed this idea of attention and, and how uh, I, 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 I was seeking immortality with, uh, with, with the permanence of the documentation huh. of the video camera. And, and I really broke it down. But, but like, how, how immortal are we talking? I mean, like, to, 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 to give context um how many people who lived 300 years ago are we aware of today how about how about i i i think it's like a year but how about five years ago how about (laughs) personalities on film or heroes in wars and things like that eddie murphy uh, eddie uh audi uh audi 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 murphy audi murphy oh is he the one that the world war ii uh, and he's got the movie captured all out. the G- Marine Germans, and he got the Medal of Honor, <clears throat> and he got into Western movies. And I can't even. Re- I'm I'm messing his name up. Mm-hmm. I think I think it, is it Oppenheimer, and there's a movie coming out about him. What, no. The Oppenheimer bomb. Oh, Oppenheimer. I don't know. No, the Oppenheimer Obviously, this was this person's not lead, that memorable. <laughs> Oppenheimer <laughs> was a lead scientist in making uh, one of the lead scientists in making the atomic bomb. I think we're proving the point that uh, that <laughs> that how ephemeral. Yeah. Fame is. That's the point. Right. Right. Fleeting and, and temporary. Uh, the great World War, uh, the, the Civil War generals, their statues are being torn down. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, no matter how much metal you put into a, 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 a statue remembering you, it's eventually melted down and made into bullets or something. You know? Right. So, so what, what is permanent? A star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, <laughs> or a tree. I, I, I mean, I don't. Five hundred years for a tree. Right? I, I think the answer is nothing is permanent, and so you get down to the basic question of like what, like what's it all about? I you think know? I think I know something that is more permanent than what we're talking about. That is good deeds. Yeah, right. You do something for somebody that reverberates, and and that person passes it on, and it just continues to. 
Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, I, I want to close the loop on, on the tree thing because as I understand it, there are companies that that will uh, sell, arrange. In Seattle. Uh, it, 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 oh, some, oh, I think in something, California. Too. Something called a tree pod, which is egg shaped. And I don't even think that's exactly that, right. Yeah, I don't even think that they that they uh, require cremation. I think they actually fit I think your a, body. I in, think there's a law about your body. I'm not quite sure of it, but I think they don't allow the body itself to be put into the ground without because like hazardous waste materials or something. <laughs> that's maybe. exactly right. So maybe they gotta. Yeah. But but if that's the but case. But if your ashes, it's different. Yeah, if, if that's the case or not, but they will actually assign you to a tree. Yes. Like, yes, uh, no, there are bu- companies that will do the that. actual tree. Yeah. Absolutely. There are, I know there are companies that will do that, and I think there's at least one, if not more, in California. But I'm sure that as this thought becomes more popular, because I grasped it from something I read, and I thought, that's the way I want to go. Yeah. Uh, and if you do a story file... And have a little camera on your tree. Somebody come up and ask, you know, hey, whose tree is it? That's mm-hmm. my tree. Get the hell off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think you kind of screw it up by putting cameras and screens on probably, the tree. <laughs> probably. Yeah, but you can also like take the ashes and make it into a diamond. And diamonds are forever. Uh, I never not, heard that. Uh, diamonds are not according carbon. to James Bond. Right? Well, yeah, <laughs> diamonds and, and Ric Flair. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't know about that, but um, is is this song, is your song "I Want to Be a Tree" available yet? My song "I Want to Be a Tree" I did uh, with uh, Ben Folds on the piano. Okay. Uh, at uh, a concert I gave at Kennedy Center, and it'll be out. Uh, it's being uh, edited right now, and it'll be uh, available shortly. And it'll probably be call, called, entitled something like "Live at Ken- Shatner Live okay. at Kent." Okay, I'm so eagerly anticipating. It's this so day. much like, fun. I, I feel so strongly about that. Robert, that I- Robert Cherno wrote the lyrics. I, we we uh, we we have a team. Uh, Robert Cherno writes the words. I I'm the, sort of the idea guy and editor. And Dan Miller of They Might Be Giants. Uh, is our musical guy. So the three of us have been writing songs. We have an album out there called Bill, out there right now, which is glorious. It's got great, incredible, breathtaking reviews. Is I love of the it. Words. Yeah. And then this next album and this uh, and this documentary uh, uh, live at Kennedy Center will be all the songs the three of us wrote. And and how long have you been making music? When I was shooting Star Trek, uh, a, a well-known uh, label came up to me and said, would you like to make an album? I said, oh, yeah, I'd like to make an album. Oh, sure. And so I had an, I, I had an idea. Uh, the idea was uh, to use traditional uh, great pieces of literature, to be or not to be, for example. Was that signs for something? No. Okay. To be or not to be, uh, as an as a example. And I recorded music, new music, uh, original music written to To Be or Not To Be, Hamlet's soliloquy, segued into the song at the time was very popular. It was a very good year. Uh, and it's a song about the, how this older guy is really positive. At the age of 24, I did this. At the age of 30, I was doing this. And it was a very positive life. So the two segments belong to each other. One, I'm going to commit suicide to be or not be. I don't know that I'm going to. And the other is, I have had a great life. And music segued into one. It was a, a six-minute cut. And when I went to do it, uh, uh, one of those cuts on the Johnny Carson show, uh, the producer came up to me and said, uh, six minutes, you can only do three. Do you want to do the literature or do you want to do the song? I said, well, I'll, I'll do the song. So the song was, uh, if I remember correctly, was uh, Mr. Tambourine Man, a drug song. And the literature was uh, something by Cyrano de Bergerac, a speech by Cyrano de, uh, given by the character Cyrano de Bergerac. Uh, I'm, it was, which ends, I may climb to no great heights, but I will climb alone. 
I don't need any help. Okay. It segues into a drug song. I need help. A drug song. Yeah. So, so I thought that was really cool. <laughs> so now I can only do one. <clears throat> Which one do you want to do? I, don't know, I better do the song. Now I'm on the song. So now you're on the Tonight Show. Big druggie. Big druggie. I'm a druggie. <laughs> I don't know what the hell's that. And everybody laughed it off, and, it's, and the thing sank. On t- the records, uh, the album sank until uh, Ben Folds discovered it uh, in a garage sale. We laugh about it, and he and I got together and we made a great album called Has Been, and that's when, when, been when a, did, a, a lauded album. When did Ben discover it at the garage sale? About twenty years later. Okay, wow, that's hmm. great. Um, the uh, I feel like before I talk about the um, how much it means to me that uh that you're 92 and it's just so sharp so the, the able able-bodied it's my dad is 80 and uh the idea of dad deteriorating yeah. mentally or physically is just the most uh it's it's a it's a, a crippling fear that I well have. of course it is you see your dad as a young man as a, a youngster your dad's all powerful and all loving, and he's everything. He's your he's your world, and then you be you get older and see him more as a man, and the man himself is beginning to suffer the ravages of time, and the mind goes, and the body goes, and suddenly he's no longer fielding a, a kickoff and running the length of the football field. He's saying, "Oh, you do it. I'll watch and I'll clap." And the cycle of life is totally natural. But you know what's not natural is all this darn plastic in the ocean. In fact, it's destroying the earth, man. And that's why I drink liquid death from infinitely recyclable aluminum cans that totally look like beers, except it's just water, dude. And man, this company just gets better and better. Not only are they saving the world, they're hilarious. They took all of the most hateful comments on their social media page, like people calling them devil worshippers and all this ridiculous stuff, and they made an album out of these hateful comments. It's called Liquid Death's Greatest Hates, Volume 3. And, dude, I love it. I love it. And, man, you can get 20% off your first order of the amazing liquid death apparel all that stuff's hilarious too if you go to liquiddeath.com slash stevo plus this company is growing and growing they started out just sparkling water and still water then all these flavors of flavored sparkling water now all of these hilarious teas the armless palmer come on this is the greatest company ever so represent them Go to liquiddeath.com slash Devo for 20% off your first order of Liquid Death apparel and find all the drinks on the website as well as on Amazon plus at your local retailers. This company is growing, 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 and that is what we want. So rep Liquid Death and let's get back to it. And uh, and you're seeing what life is all about, the, the, the deterioration of of your body and uh, many times your mind uh, i mean i'd like to think that old age adds wisdom but i'm here to tell you it doesn't <laughs> no i mean you're just as much of an idiot at uh, 90 than you are at 20. I, i'll push back on that Please. i think that that when you learn from your mistakes and make the appropriate adjustments to your lifestyle that 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 in All right. Itself is wisdom. So that that uh, is uh, uh, takes into account that you have the intelligence and the perception and the uh, resources to correct a mistake. Oh, geez, I made a mistake. I better not do that again. As against most people, say, oh, oh, that happened. The car hit me. I don't know. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. And it. Uh, what? What? I, how many people say, no, I, I didn't make a mistake. I don't. Right. That's true. And I think that the, the three of us are very lucky to be sober alcoholics slash drug addicts. And Were you? Yeah, all, all of us. He's been. See, I, I never did that. Yeah. Yeah. Vinny's been clean and sober for five years. Scott's been clean and sober for ten years, and I've been clean and sober for fifteen years. That's fantastic. 
Were you doing this uh, when you weren't cleaning? Oh children? yeah, big time. So did the drugs help <clears throat> uh, 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 say uh, allay the the pain? There there were some things that wouldn't have happened were it not for uh, acute intoxication. Mm -hmm. um, those things were not uh, part of the Jackass uh, franchise because um, the, to appear on camera acutely intoxicated would not have been the spirit of Jackass. We would... Oh, how wonderful, man. It, it, was okay, it was okay to finish up a bit and say, now let's go to the bar. Yeah. And it was okay to, to be hungover and even acknowledge that you're hungover in a bit. Right. But it was never okay to be... Uh, really intoxicated. It diffused the purity of what you yeah, it, it what your ambition it, it, was. It, for it undermined the wholesome nature yeah, of yeah. it. <laughs> so you're telling me, Jackass number two, you weren't super uh, intoxicated in a lot of those bits. Uh Jackass number one I was yeah, maybe that applied a little bit less in Jackass number one. Okay. Jackass yeah. number two I don't think I was Well wait, but you but uh, do you mind continuing on this theme of you I, of I, I don't mind a bit. The, the attention grabbing, look how much pain I can take, concept, didn't include I'm going to get a lot of attention to begin with. But then when you saw how the movies and, and the and the TV show became so popular, people were like, my God, you got to watch this, you can't believe it. Then you began to get the attention you craved, and you were able to rationalize, hey, I'm getting, I'm doing this, and it's salutary. I'm I'm doing good here. I'm taking people's mental uh, and maybe even physical pain away from them momentarily while they watch mine. Yeah. That must have occurred to you at some point. Oh, right? absolutely. Not from the beginning though. Mm. <laughs> that wasn't the intention, but it turned that, out to be. That's where I was going. Like the. Uh, the intention. The modus uh, operandi. I, the the eventual effect. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to be notable. I wanted to be uh, noticed. I wanted to be noted. I wanted to be remembered. And uh, and that was, you know, kind of... But when did you get it in your head that you, when, what you were doing was taking temporary re, uh, mm -hmm. pain away from people? I think that came along a little a little later. See, I think it was a, a rationale later on. This is, Could be. You know... God, I mean, I, I'm doing it for my personal benefit, but look what's happening. Yeah. These people are coming up to me and saying, God, that was wonderful. You just, uh, for a moment, I forgot my problems and, and saw yours. Yeah. yeah. There are people who, who do say, you got, Jackass got me through some tough times. There are, there are people who uh, were serving overseas in the military. And no say it really helped us when we were deployed. Wow. You know, the stuff like that. And that's always meaningful. I, I love that. Huge. But the reason I brought up my dad, and thankfully, um, Dad's still sharp as a tack and, and very, very uh, able-bodied and good health. That's a weird uh, metaphor, isn't it? Sharp as a tack. Yeah, like... <laughs> yeah. Sharp as a tack, like you sit on a tack. Oh, shit. Yeah. Sharp as a cactus needle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> sharp as a razor. Sharp as a scalpel. Uh, he, he's great. And, and um, my dad was a, a successful businessman. Uh, which is why I grew up in five different countries, and and uh, you know he worked as a uh, he was the president of Pepsi Cola in all of Brazil when I was six months old. No kidding. He went on to become a high level big tobacco CEO. I'm sorry to hear that. And then he uh, became the president of Nabisco International. Now I'm happy. So he sold <laughs> s soda, um, cigarettes, and cookies. <laughs> Making him the a biggest. mass murderer. <laughs> yeah. A huge drug dealer. <laughs> was, he on the, was he on that panel in, in, uh, in front of uh, the government uh, saying no, no, tobacco's uh, okay? He, he, our dad was very involved in the, with, with the lawyers and, uh, and, and how to nimbly get around uh, just continuing mass murder, <laughs> uh, for sure. Um, but, uh, but with that said, he really, really... Uh, He's an, an incredibly genius guy, and, and uh, he's Must been be. he's been retired for a long time, but um, my, the the business component of my personal career has actually pulled my father out of retirement, 
And uh, I think that that's... Does he help you with the business? He's on my payroll. Oh, my He's on my payroll. He's he's basically my business manager at this point. uh, He he handles all my insurance stuff, all my tax stuff. And and I really believe that um, that, that it's it's like a muscle. The the, the, the enthusiasm for life is is a muscle that you got to keep. And I think that it's keeping my father... uh, passionate it's it's keeping him it just it's keeping that fire lit and i think that's keeping him healthy and giving him longevity and i'm so well so that's wonderful and and i agree with you and i have um deliberately sought uh companies that are uh, some of them are after me some i went after uh, that are futuristic um i'm thinking of one uh, in which the company has invented a way of projecting your image very much like uh, beaming in. Okay. Now, it requires a receptacle like a telephone booth, but we can project your image into this uh, telephone booth, and it's three-dimensional. It's you talking to the to the audience and the audience talking to you and you're there in the telephone booth and if, if for all intents and purposes you're there you aren't it's a projection but it's 3d and it looks exactly like it and you're interacting so this is a holograph it's, it's a, a hologram exactly exactly uh, and uh, so that's a, a company I'm I've become a, uh, a member of and I'm going to do that very thing uh, at a company a large company gathering in August, I'm going to beam in to a large meeting. Uh, and this is actually you, not AI and not a pre-recorded thing. N- no, I'll be live, although you can pre-record yourself right. and, and beam in. And so you just, it's on film. This will not be. This will be live in an actual speech in front of 4,000 people and interacting with uh, the, the master of ceremonies or whatever it is. Will you be able to see the people? Yes, there's a camera on the telephone booth pointing out and a microphone and of course they can see me and it's like you're gonna get stage fright but you're not gonna be in on a stage right it's kind of a weird concept <laughs> it, it's it's really incredible the technology and and to the the point about um the technology being capable of putting words in in politicians mouth during wartime i'm shocked that there has not already been uh, catastrophic results of this this technology. That's work. why you have the head of one of the uh, I think it was Chatbox uh, testifying in front of the government saying we need regulation. Yeah. And I don't think regulation is going to do it because there's always some outlier who is going to use the technology to their benefit. Right. Yeah, you can it's, have like a, a, a TV pop up or some Vladimir Putin on TV saying I'm going to nuke the United States, and you couldn't tell the difference if it him or not. No, not I'm going to, because it's already said it. They're on their way. They're the on their way. are on their way. <laughs> I mean, goodbye, what? everybody. We're, we're safe in Russia. We're, we're live on YouTube right now. Oh, right. my God, it's and, Vladimir and, Putin's going to give a speech. And, and Biden says, my God, send the rockets the other way, and somebody's done that mischief and destroyed the world. It's crazy. Uh, it's, it's really, really it's really. We're scary. in the middle. We're in the center of a maelstrom. All of us, you guys more than I because I'm older, but there is this technological revolution going on and there's this global warming revolution going on. And it's like these storms that are hitting uh, the East Coast after one after the other. There's this incredible change that's going on right now. Yeah. I mean, think of it. We're in a bloody truck parked on a street ready to, to reach your audience, several million, I'm sure. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it's bizarre. We're talking and looking and, and all in a, on a Ventura Boulevard. I mean, is it truck. crazy for you, because you were born in the 30s, like just to see how quickly this evolved? You know, it crept up. Uh, I, uh, I did radio in in Canada. I was a part of a Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, both for, out of Montreal, where I was born, Toronto, where I went to live and, and work. So there was a lot of radio, and then TV came in, and it was all cool. It was, you know, doing stage work, all part of it. 
Then it's uh, the live television. I go into New York and I, suddenly I'm involved in live television. And there's these huge cameras swooping in on you, doing a close up and, and uh, plays, great playwrights writing for television. Wow, that's great. And then film. Started making films, and then they, they started doing interesting close up. Then the amount of light you needed began to lessen. Then you began to shoot film in candlelight. Candlelight. Mm. That whole film, I'm trying to remember who's it did it in candlelight. Uh, well, you're, you're saying be, because before, like, you couldn't film something in that low of light? <laughs> no, you needed 17 hot arc lights and 17 people standing by the arc, like, twisting the, the carbon so they would always. Uh, be at, at that uh, light value. I mean, it was so much, so much technological stuff has taken place, and yet, the truth still remains, and that is, tell an interesting story or get an interesting personality. You would have been great in, I guess, not on radio because you need to see it, but in live television, uh, fifty years ago, you'd have been just as great as you are now, because what you do is unique, is attention gathering, <laughs> well, okay? Uh, and those truths remain. So some of it slips by, the techno technological stuff slips by, and you got a dog sleeping on your lap, and his eyes are half open, and he's just enjoying it, and that's forever. How were the Hollywood parties in the 50s and 60s? You know... Different. No, I never went to, I ne I've never seen I have never seen drugs being used on the set in all the years. There might have been guys sniffing and snorting and drinking back behind a set. I never saw it. I never saw anybody. Maybe once uh, <laughs> somebody was out of it, but I, I never went to a Hollywood party. I how, never. How I, come? I, I was too busy working. I don't know. Yeah. It's just, I, I'm not. That isn't me. Getting obliterated is not my personality. I, I um, was going to college at McGill University in Montreal. So when I got to university, there'd be some kids saying, okay, we're going to get some of that alcohol from the lab and put it in a grapefruit juice and we'll drink it. Okay. And Shatner, taste the grapefruit juice to see if it's got enough alcohol in And I... I'd, about three times, I would be the taster. A little boom, and I'd be out. And the next morning, I'd get up, and I'm sick of the world. The room's whirling, and I'm thinking, why did I do that? About three times of that, negative reinforcement. Oh, that's no fun. <laughs> yeah. To be sick the next morning, let alone obliterated and unconscious the night before. Yeah. It was, it was, <clears throat> I, uh... your life goes out the window. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, I, it sure I'm, did. I'm, I'm speaking to the <laughs> to the choir. Yeah. yeah. Um, the 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 you can call me Bill documentary. I heard you describe it as uh, as as a, a for legacy. You say you've been a part of all these different things, all these different shows, and and uh, but but it was time to make something about you so that you could leave that behind, sort of as a message in a bottle type of thing. Yeah. In essence. That's what I really I, I, I realize that I'm doing. I'm working harder than I've ever worked for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, I mean, I don't know why I'm working so hard, except that I'm, I'm doing it for my kids, putting the money aside for the kids. I mean, things are going to be tough. i trying to find ways of protecting them. Uh, I, I don't need the money. I, you know, yeah. Got a car. You drive the car. You, you know, go to a good meal. How much money do you need? Yeah, and I, I just, I, I just, it, it moves me so much the way you described making your documentary, and I, um, and am pursuing a uh, a project where I make a documentary about my dad and his career and my relationship with him, and how it how. Uh, What's our, the driving force? What's the through line? The through line, um, I, I, I just think it's the be the beauty of our relationship. My um, my my dad's career 
but I think people, there, there's an awareness that my dad was a, a successful corporate executive, but uh, I think there's some... What, what's dramatically interesting about that? Well, I thought it was interesting when you used to... Okay, okay. I'm glad you're asking this question. I think I've got an answer. Um, Dad, being uh, successful the way that he was, had uh, ideas about what he wanted his son to become. Um, you know, oh. it, it was understood that I would go to university, that I would get a diploma, and that I would be successful in some kind of career. And when I went to university, I could not bring myself to go to class, and I failed I out. Go to class I failed out as badly as you can, and and next thing you know, that I say, I say, Dad, I'm I'm going to become a crazy famous stuntman with the with a video camera, and this was the worst news that my dad had ever heard. It was it was just a bomb, and, and not just my dad. Everybody who I told this plan to felt sorry for me. It was pathetic. What a loser I was, and I wouldn't give up. I wouldn't give up. Um, before I had any success, my dad. And in, initiated a conversation with me. He said, "Son, I think I've done a disservice to you by not supporting you in this absurd career path that you've chosen. But I see that you're uh, committed to it, and uh, and and I just want you to be the best." And he pledged to support me, and that put wind in my sails. And 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 uh, and Dad and I have been a partnership. So ever since you want then. to tell a love story? Yeah. Yeah, and, and the way that Dad struggled, I think that that would be the conflict, the way that Dad struggled with the direction I was going in. Do you in. have a problem <coughs> with the tobacco industry? Um, I smoked. No, <laughs> yeah, you're, you, you're, you're supporting your father by smoking. <laughs> the, but, but I mean, there's a, there's a dichotomy, isn't there? Okay. What well, goodness your dad did and, and the, the tobacco industry, which was deliberately lying. And harmful. Okay. Well, I think that what's fascinating is that like uh, you came from money, but you didn't even you rejected it all. I mean, you even sat up front with the with your chauffeur. Yeah. When he when he got dropped off at school because he was so embarrassed that he right. wanted to look like he was the. So, I would hug the, the chauffeur. <laughs> Did you really? He hugged him. No so way. Chauffeur. <laughs> Goodbye, Dad. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> his dad in the back. <laughs> Lie down, Dad. <laughs> the back seat. Well, you lived fucking dirt poor from like sixteen to well, when I when I failed 26. out when I failed out of the University of Miami, I had nothing to report to my parents that would have made them proud. I wasn't doing anything that they would have agreed with, and and I had too much pride. I was raised with too much pride to ask them to bankroll me being a piece of shit doing nothing that they wanted me to do. So I, uh, I, I had enough pride to struggle on my own and, and... All right, so what you're telling, the story, you've got a couple of stories there. That's your story yep. uh, of the struggle with being, uh, having a silver spoon and rejecting it and putting a, <laughs> a gun in your mouth that says, <laughs> as against a silver spoon. Your rejection of that life and uh, and seeking fame and fortune in this bizarre yeah. stunt stunt life that you have, <laughs> or it's a story about your father and his evolution to saying I'll, I'll support you uh, in, yeah. in, in, in the life you've chosen because of my love for you. Uh, I suppose both could uh, be intertwined. But it lacks a black drama to it. It's very white and in every meaning of the word. Uh, so you got to look for a through line All that, right. that that'll hook me to watch it. As against, oh, pretty boy does a pretty thing, you know. The, uh, and it ends with stapling. Well, your I'm glad that I'm glad that you're that you're pushing back and and uh, and and challenging me to to, to make to, this to, to compelling find, to, to find the, com yeah. the compelling elements of it exactly. and uh and i i do love uh the um the i i love when when you point to the tobacco industry and its lies and it's it's greed um i think that uh that capitalism greed is uh so destructive and yes the tobacco industry is an extreme example of that but that this bleeds into every the whole fabric yeah of art. but you know that that's capitalism gone wrong capitalism of course is uh, is the 
engine behind all this invention. Uh, right. So, I, I mean, it's Hollywood. It's it's it's, it's Hollywood. Small business. It's, the web, it's everything. It's the Web Telescope. Yeah. You right. know, I mean, uh, ambition for knowledge uh, is one aspect of the goodness of man, of the greatness right. of man. Right. The more you can make, the more good you can do. I feel. You said something interesting just a moment ago that uh, you're setting aside money for your kids because times are going to be tough. And and what we're seeing with the the evolution of, of, of the world, the, the, the wealth gap, the disparity between the rich and the poor, the middle class is disappearing. Like uh, hardworking, honest people are being just priced out of, of being able to purchase even a modest single family home. And it, it's just that this wealth disparity has gotten so severe that it's, it's really become what we would describe as a mega threat along with the climate change uh, uh, along absolutely you know and um and i have a, a friend who I, I grew up with i've known him since we were both nine years old his name's abdullah he's a devout muslim and and uh i i was uh, embarrassed of how big my house was in school and so i spent all my time at abdullah's house oh my god and i'd be praying to in the direction of mecca with abdullah and, and no kidding. Uh, yeah it was, it was just what happened at his house and he was my best friend um abdullah went on to graduate from um, brown university with a 4.0 and then went on to Cor ISIS. Cornell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a sad went, ending to this one. Uh, then, then, then he went on to Cornell <laughs> Medical School, and then he became a pediatric surgeon at the Mayo Clinic. No kidding. And actually invented procedures for operating on unborn babies in the womb. Fantastic. Like uh, with some kind of coiling, so he's just oh he's Lord. unbelievable. And then there's me and what I did, <laughs> and, and we've we our paths could not have strained more right. differently from each other, but we've always stayed in touch, and uh, and and he's just someone I I dearly love, and we were playing pool, um, in a in a restaurant well over a decade ago, and I explained to Abdullah I don't want to have kids. I don't. He says why? He's got he's got like four or five kids. I say I don't want to have kids. He says this is why. He says you know that makes me sad. And I said well Abdullah, for our parents, getting a university diploma meant placement in a career of your choosing. For us, you know it, it was helpful, but but no guarantees. And for our kids, it really just means nothing but being saddled with debt. And I'm looking at the world and the dwindling opportunity, and I just don't have the conscience to bring somebody into this world to struggle and to be to have everything. And I just, I just don't, don't want to do that. And Abdullah said something to me that I've, I've shared before, but it's so powerful and I love it so much. He said, Steve, in Africa, with all of the poverty, the, the famine, the, the disease. Do you think people are any less happy? And my gut initial reaction is to think, well, yeah, they're, but Abdullah, he just looked me in the eyes and, and, and I, I got what, what he meant was that you can strip somebody's um, resources from, you can, you can take away their, 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 even their health, or take away all their money. You can take it, but you cannot take away somebody's capacity to love another, and that is that capacity to love is the source of happiness. Okay, so as you're talking, a picture that I often see in front of me formed, and that is this: a mother with a with a a cloth over her head, bare arms. Child, brown eyes are looking vacantly at the mother. Flies are crawling all over the child. And the mother's going like this with the flies. She's starving, child's starving. And I think of that picture as a, a great part of humanity is doing that while we sit in a truck in our luxury uh, on, on, uh, on uh, Ventura Boulevard. I can't believe that that mother is happy. 
that child's going to die, the mother's going to die, water resources are drying up all over the Middle East. You can't tell me that they're happy. If it was a question of, I've got the hut, I've got my children, I've got enough porridge to satisfy everybody, and we're having a nice life. That's one thing. But it's gone beyond that. Yeah. Mm. So, mm. yeah. So I, 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 every time I, I think about riches and, and comfort, and, and I think of this uh, unknown lady of whom we've all seen so many uh, documentaries on, footage on what's happening in a in the bare bones of Ethiopia or whatever. Uh, it's not a good life. Oof. I, I, you know, um, I, I see Abdullah's point on, on a, a spiritual level, and, and man, I, I, I kind of lean towards, to, towards your perspective. I went ahead and had the vasectomy, Bill. <laughs> By stapling your balls to your <laughs> yeah. No, I, I had a, a problem. That would be a, would be a thick ball stapling vasectomy. Right. While, while stapling, I, had a, oh, yeah. I put the staple in the wrong place. Um, man, I, I, I'm so honored that, to have this conversation. We've, we've, we've uh, just... We've gone over a... Yeah, yeah. We, we've we've belligerently neglected to promote your your current project. Uh, stars, on on stars on Mars. Stars on Mars. Oh, Stars and on Mars. Stars on Mars. It's, it's fun. I, it is. It's fun. I got the screener, and and I've gotten. I enjoyed it. I've gotten. Good. I've gotten screeners. I haven't seen it. I don't know what the numbers are. I don't know what the reaction <laughs> is. I'm totally uh, the, the the Fox hasn't notified me at all. I don't know whether it's popular or whether it's unpopular, but everybody I talked to seems to have enjoyed it. And I had a, a kick, a real kick doing it, both here and then we went into the outback of Australia. Right. Is that where that was? Oh, was. my God. It was awful. It was <laughs> so, I, mean, I mean, it's one thing to be walking around in dry, arid. Yeah. Ca- ca- but it's another thing to be attacked by the flies. The flies mm. are, they're so, they're so vicious crazed for for moisture that they attack your eyes and you go to say hell and they'll go drag your, your mouth and your ears and, <laughs> and, and you can't and that's shooting in the outback in yeah Australia. um it, it, it doesn't seem from from uh the episodes i saw that you actually interact with the cast well i was there I, uh, a, a part of what i did was shot here uh, using some of the footage that they were shooting there. Then I went there and interacted. Okay. So the latter parts of uh, the, sh- uh, I don't know how many, with 10 or 12 hours that we shot, uh, the latter hours I'm, I'm involved with them in uh, Cooper PD, uh, yeah. 500 miles into the outback. I'll, I'll tell you what's fascinating about it is the star power on that show, I mean, Isn't that something. Ronda mm-hmm. Rousey is oh. is on there. She is a superstar and a, and a lovely person too. Uh, uh, and uh, Natasha Leggero, Natasha uh, Leggero, yeah. uh, Marshawn Lynch, uh-huh. yeah, did names Robert, that, uh, and uh, is it William Sherman. William the, Sherman, the, uh, yeah, the, and then some great uh, athletes, Nick Lovin. Great, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and people who are so popular. And I don't know. Do you, do you know all these popular people? I do. I'm 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 aware. The, the the person I didn't know was the Vanderpump Rules cast member. But that show is so sizzling hot right now. That's, I think that's uh, Mario's buddy. Uh, no, nah, Tom Sandoval was Mario's okay, buddy. This okay. this this guy's a different guy. Anyway, but, a but lot it, of firepower there. It, it is, and uh, the, the show's fascinating. It's um, it's uh, a, a simulation of what. Mar, what life on Mars would require. And the require. set that they built, that they took out to the desert there, yeah. is a really good simulation of what uh, astronauts would need right. uh, to live in uh, on Mars. Right, and they, they, they're, they're by the books. They, they're dotting the I's and crossing the T's of what would be required to exactly. be on Mars. Now, <clears throat> of course, they're not on Mars, but... It's so uh, so faithful to the science of a colony on Mars that it's just fascinating. And what's even more fascinating to me is that with the, the fragmentation of the media, how many 
eyeballs are, are diverted to social media, to the internet, to, to, to YouTube, to all this, the, the, the streamers taking away all the, the necessity for, for uh, traditional television networks. How there, there's a, a viable business in this being a television show with that much star power, with that much just evident, like, cost to this show how are there that, are there that many eyeballs watching television to justify this this well i i uh, we'll find out <laughs> i mean i'll tell you it's uh, it, it it seems that television is uh is is getting really up there with the the movie industry as far as just being an exercise in incredibly high stakes gambling right, right. it's uh can, can i ask you what your favorite sci-fi movie is did you have like a favorite space movie? Did you like Interstellar? Well, you know, they got the technology has gotten better and better. Yeah, as can be evidenced by the Star Treks that that have evolved into now. Yeah, you know, spending ten million dollars on an hour, and we spend one hundred eighty-five thousand dollars on an hour for me. Um, so the, the technology has gotten better. Uh, Star Wars has got great technology. J.J. Abrams understood the trick uh, to make it a ride so the movies he made for Star War, uh, Star Trek uh, were successful because of the ride. But a great science fiction movie needs to have a great science fiction thesis, uh, idea, concept. Uh, so I, I don't know where to go with that. Uh, uh, what's his name? Did... Uh, um, like water, um, uh, the uh, that movie like water. Uh, yeah, is that won an Oscar? Yeah, no, that like water, no the the science fiction film. I'm trying to remember. Um, it was a uh, people. They, they lived in the trees and they run. They jumped. Avatar. Oh, Avatar. Avatar. Yeah, yeah. Okay. the Avatar movies. You like those? Well, the technology is per perfection. I, I, I'm curious about something, and we'll, we'll let you go here um, shortly, but um, the is it true that the, the, the Star Trek series in which you start as Captain Kirk only lasted for three seasons? Right. So We did 79, 79 uh, episodes. Okay, and 79, 79 episodes hours, is quite yeah. a bit. But um, the... Uh, <clears throat> them canceling it after three seasons does that did they go on to think wow we really screwed up did it become incredibly popular after it was six years afterwards they started something called syndication yeah and that begat the popularity of star trek people began to see it whereas it had been hidden at uh, late in the friday evening and you know they just never saw it but something that caught the audience's eye, that caught my eye. They had made a pilot that didn't sell, got in touch with me when I played the captain. I came to see the pilot. I thought, wow, that's, <clears throat> that's really interesting. I, I'd like to be a part of this. So something of the Star Trek milieu attracts people. And now you got all these different Star yeah. Trek hours that just yeah. multiply. Yeah, I read that they wanted it so badly that they're watching bloopers. They're sending, airing bloopers from Star Trek, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. They made... So we... The, the editors took... Uh, you know, I'd kid around on the set or somebody, and they would uh, make a Christmas film for us. So at a Christmas party, they'd play bloopers for 20 <laughs> minutes. So we had two Christmas parties in three years, and then all of a sudden they were selling it. Which <laughs> angered some of the actors who didn't get you paid. You didn't get paid for bloopers, I'm no. assuming, right? That's funny. Um, and and uh, I who heard you want to go, sweetheart. <laughs> She's stuck. She's like your leg. Yeah, pull her. Give, help her. Wendy. Yeah. Wendy from Peru. There you I, go. I I heard you say that your career has spanned 80 years. More. More so, so that uh, presumably means that you are uh, a child star. I was acting when I was six. Wow, and that was in radio. Uh, right? That was on stage, actually. 
Yeah, girl. <laughs> Might as well eat it. Yeah, yeah, got, oh, it's water. Yeah, I got her some yeah. water. Um, so six years old to nine. I was on stage. So that's and a, then continued on. It's, my whole it's life. incredible. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Isn't it, it though? It's absolutely unbelievable. And yet I feel like I'm looking at this microphone and it's like an old friend. I know, I know this mic. Except the mics we used were, uh, I don't know, the triangular, so that. You could fade in and fade out. Mm. Do you remember those at all? You know I mean, that? I... No. No. <laughs> then there was a microphone that uh, Ben Folds used that Hitler used. Oof. It had energy inside it, electrical power tubes inside the microphone uh, for clarity and all. Um, it's, it's just incredible. 86 years and going. <laughs> and the stars on Mars is, is fantastic. You Can Call Me Bill is forthcoming. Hey, uh, there's a wonderful series that's a big hit called uh, The Unexplained uh, okay. on, uh, on um, uh, 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 God, uh, on uh, Netflix and, um, and History. Okay. Uh, it started on History. It's on Netflix. It's a big hit. Uh, then of course there's uh, a watch. Uh, uh, the watch for company Egard came to me and said, "We made a watch some years ago. Would you like to try another one?" And I thought, "Yes, I've got a vision." And I described what I wanted for the the face. They made a beautiful watch. So this watch is coming out uh, called Passages, and it'll be out soon. And it's uh, it's it's got the Webb telescope as a second hand. The Earth and the Sun, hours and minutes, and on the on the face is the Milky Way, and the bracelet looks like Moon Rock. Wow. Okay. So it should be something. What else have I got? The, the albums forthcoming. The, the live, albums live at coming. Kennedy Center. There's two albums, one live and the other one, Bill, which is on Spotify and Spotify. The uh, the books. They're, and the books. The books have been oh, out. Oh, uh, uh, there's a book out there called Bold to Go. Uh, which has uh, gotten uh, nice reviews. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a prolific career to say the least. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm working on something that could be so phenomenal. I'm working on a children's album with my team, Rob Cherno, Dan Miller. Uh, the interconnection of nature. Okay. Uh, just briefly, for example. Elephants in Africa, on the, on the plains of Africa. No, no, no trees, nothing. What's on the plains are termite mounds. The elephants have an itchy butt. They scratch themselves on the termite mounds. The mounds break, fall to the ground. There's a little uh, definition there from the elephants walking around. It rains. That little definition gathers water. Uh, the water seeps in, makes it bigger. The animals come to drink water. And finally, there's a watering hole. They make watering holes, these elephants, by accident, but it's all part of the interconnection of nature. Yeah. We'll have 12, 14 songs of the interconnection of nature for children, along with a children's book illustrated with the lyrics. In, in the, That's cool. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Like, like, like we've just written a song. You, you've seen the news, the beluga whale. It's a spy whale. Well, I had a harness. It looks like the, the Russians were using it as a spy. Mm -hmm. So we've written a song about a beluga <laughs> whale that's a spy, like a James Bond spy. And he, but his bulk is a thousand pounds. He finds it hard to hide this beluga whale. So it's great fun. It's fun. That's great. It, it, it's it's incredible. It, it's it's been an absolute honor. Thank, Thank you, you for sure coming asked. in our creepy van. No, it's but it's homey. Now you got to serve. Uh, Grilled steaks or something or that. <laughs> yeah. Um, Not it, in this. It, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just great to be able to bring the studio to the guest. Oh, it's perfect. It's a great idea. Yeah. Great. And it uh, looks like like Wendy's all... She, Wendy's she's, had, Wendy's had over the it. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you so much. Yeah, it's thank been you. So yeah, thank you. Yeah. Wonderful talking Wait, to you. Thank you. Bill. Yeah. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you. You can do one thing for me, though. Sure. All right. I want you to run into this microphone. <laughs> <laughs> you break your nose. 
Well, there you have it, folks. William Shatner is beyond legendary. I mean, I love that guy. And I love you for sticking around to the end of the Wild Ride podcast, man. Um, where, what episode was this? 167? Dude, it's crazy. It's crazy. We got William Shatner. Get the fuck out of here. Actually, don't get the fuck out of here. Stick around to the end every time. And come see me in the UK. Plus the last leg of the bucket list tour in the US, September. Come on. Thanks, everybody.